Okay, good morning everyone. You are on the right channel. BBC Radio S74P Biology. You might be wondering why we have this title by Iron Maiden to start off with. Well, the first thing is to pump up your energy so that you have lots of energy to go through this video. And the second one is because um, we're going to talk about the dark stage of photosynthesis. That's how it was first named. And we'll see that later on it was called the light independent stage. But you might be scared of this dark stage because of the knowledge behind it. But hopefully after this video you should not fear you should not have the fear of the dark stage of photosynthesis. I suppose Iron Maiden shortened it to fear of the dark. It's probably a more brain mainstream title. Okay. So in your booklet you can refer to this title, Light Independent Stage and the Calvin Cycle. Um, just to set things, this occurs within the stroma of the chloroplast, so not in the filicoids, next to the filicoids in the stroma. Um, we've got different things, we know that CO2 will be reduced into glucose and water and in the process we know that NADPH2 will be used as well as ATP. So what we're going to focus on is what happens here and we'll see that this is called the Calvin cycle. Okay, moving on. Um, Calvin, he was a chap. Here's a picture of him. He was born in 1911 and died in 1997. He had a long scientific career. He spent 50 years mostly in the University of California, Berkeley. And he discovered this Galvin cycle with two other scientists and they were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1961. So thanks to his work along with Andrew Benson and James Basham they were able to um, discover all the subtle parts of this cycle which is now called the Calvin cycle. Um, you see the title here, Calvin's Lollipop Apparatus, 1945, that's when he did it. So this is the experiment he used to discover this cycle. Um, it's called the Lollipop Apparatus because if you look at this part here, it looks a bit like a lollipop. So what's in the lollipop? Um, it's a, a solution with algae. We can show a diagram of this experiment. So you can see that it's highly exposed to light. Um, in the apparatus itself, so we've got algae. So the species that was used was Cynidismus. So it's a organism which does photosynthesis. You can see that it has a green color. It possesses chloroplasts. In the apparatus, you've got air and CO2 pumped in. You've got alcohol at the bottom. And here you have radioactive CO2. This means a special isotope of CO2 has been used and I'm just going to show you briefly with the next slide which one. The classic CO2, the one that is most present in terms of percentage is carbon-12. 
and the one used in this experiment is carbon 14. So exactly like Rubin and Kamen's experiment, when you use a radioactive molecule that allows you to know where it ends up. Um, sorry, I said molecule, I meant to say atom. In this case it's the carbon 14 atom. So in the experiment they will they'll be using CO2 and this CO2 is the 14 one, so it's slightly radioactive. And the idea is that they want to see where this carbon ends up. Um, so to give a bit more explanation about this experiment, I'm going to use this site, BioNinja, which is a really good site if you have questions in biology or topics you want to learn about. I really recommend this internet site, it's, of, it's really good quality. So I'm just going to leave the PowerPoint for the moment and I'm going to switch to this internet site, so Bio Ninja. So they've got this very good video which sums up the experiment. Let's have a look. So we've got our apparatus and um, the idea is that carbon-14 is going to be injected, you can see it here. Then the experiment will be left for a certain amount of seconds, a certain amount of time, so 2, 4, 5, 6, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds, lots of different slots of time. And then at the bottom, oh, I'm going to cut the sound, I don't know why they put this rock music, um, I'm going to redo that and at a certain time they're going to open a valve here and the solution will drop will drop into the alcohol the alcohol will kill the algae directly and this will allow um, the scientists to know exactly what compounds have this radioactive carbon-14. So the aim of this experiment is to inject carbon-14 and to know where it ends up. And to know where it ends up, they also did different time sequences. So they looked after two seconds to see what they had, four seconds, six seconds, etc. Once they've done that, so for each sample, the one at two seconds, they'll have to do this process. The one at four seconds, they'll have to do the same process. So let's say they've left it two seconds. They then have to deposit the solution on a chromatography sheet. So you know this technique. You know that it will be placed in a solvent and that the pigments will migrate depending on their size and density. So you obviously the higher ones will have a lower density and the lower ones will have a higher density. This worked well for pigments, so for photosynthetic pigments. That, uh, we saw that previously. For this experiment they've had to do a double chromatography because at this level here, or at this level there, the molecules are so close in size and density that it's not possible to dis distinguish that there is more than one. So to make sure that they, they, have, they don't only have one, they do a second chromatography. So this first chromatography she is going to be turned to the side and then a second chromatography chromatography will be done. So again, it will move depending on density and you can see that where you had only one dot of for a certain molecule, you, in fact there are actually two different types of molecules. 
and it wasn't possible to distinguish them on the first chromatography because they have similar sizes so the fact that you do two it's to really fine-tune and identify these molecules which can be very close in terms of size there is still one last step once once they've done the chromatography to identify where the radioactive carbon ended up you need to expose the sheet to x-rays to an x-ray film to be precise and the areas where there is radioactive carbon it will leave a stain on the x-ray sheet and then after they've done this they simply have to analyze so as I said they, they did this for different time periods of time and they noticed that depending on the period of time they had different molecules which had incorporated the carbon from the carbon dioxide so this is the principle of the experiment um, so if you want to rewatch this part you can go to bio ninja the internet site that was for the principle of the experiment so now basically we're going to have a look at these results moving back to the powerpoint So we've got two, two parts of the results after 10 seconds and 60 seconds. What we can see is that after 10 seconds there is one molecule that has been produced in big quantities. This is PGA. And after 60 seconds we have PGA, we have even more, but we've got two new molecules. We've got RUBP which is here and we've got glucose which is there okay so um, this means that our cycle the first molecule which will incorporate the carbon from CO2 is PGA so that will be the starting molecule of our cycle and we know that after a certain period of time, so in this case 60 seconds, this PGA will be transformed into two things, glucose on the one side and RUBP on the other. So RUBP stands for ribulose biphosphate and glucose, you already know this molecule. So this is one of the first things they discovered is that PGA is the starting point, this is the molecule which will incorporate the CO2 and after a while ribulose biphosphate will be produced as well as glucose. To bring more information about this um, I've chosen to use one of the questions from the back exercises that you have at the end of the booklet so you can refer to page 40 where there is this back exercise I'm not going to cover the whole back exercise but just this specific question a culture of the green algae chlorella is cultured in an environment rich in the radioactive carbon labeled CO2 so this is exactly the experiment that um, um, Calvin did. By measuring their radioactivity, the amount of PGA and RUBP is established over time in conditions of light followed by dark. Results are presented in figure 6. So let's have a look. Uh, and the question for the back exercise was simply to analyse the experimental results. So let's have a look. We can see that during the light stage, these two molecules, they, the amount stays constant for each molecule. However, when the dark period starts, this changes dramatically. 
So we can see that phosphoglycerate, the amount will increase, whereas ribulose biphosphate will decrease until there is none. So what does this mean? It means that this reaction where phosphoglycerate is transformed into ribulose biphosphate cannot occur anymore. If a reaction can't occur, the consequence is that you're going to accumulate the reactants, in this case phosphoglycerate, and that's what exactly we can see on the graph. As phosphoglycerate has accumulated, then this means that the reaction is not taking place. So the question is, why is the reaction not taking place? Well, if we use knowledge from the previous chapters, we know that during the light stage, two things are produced, NADPH2 and ATP. So the reasoning is the following. During the light stage, NADPH2 and ATP are produced. So when um, the plant is not exposed to light anymore, therefore NADPH2 and ATP are not produced anymore. So what we can conclude from this is that to transform phosphoglycerate into ribulose biphosphate, well you need two things. You need ATP and you need NADPH2. So from this experiment, these are the two key points we can say is that phosphoglycerate, PGA, is the first molecule which will be transformed into rib ribulose biphosphate. And we know that to do this you need ATP and NADPH2. We've covered the first parts of the experiment. What we need to do now is try and organize other information to expose what the Calvin cycle looks like on the whole. This is what we're going to do in the next slide. Um, I'm forgetting just before that, it is clear that in your syllabus it states the following. Pupils must be able to give the scientific name of the substances. So here we go. There are five main molecules in the Calvin cycle that you need to know. So we're going to um, list them. You need to know the um, abbreviation and the complete name. So PGA. So you've got somewhere in your note in your booklets. You've got the five names in the list, so you can simply write the meaning next to the letters. So, PGA is phosphoglycerate. Um, we can also note that there are three carbons. This will be important for the next part. Then we have BPGA, which is called biphosphoglycerate. Same thing, this one has three carbons, carbons being represented with black circles. Then we have phosphoglysaldehyde, PGAL. Again, this is a three carbon chains molecule. It can also be called G3P, and I've realized that in the booklet at some points I've mentioned G3P. So you can change that into PGL. It will be more coherent because on the other documents you have PGAL. Okay, next molecule is RUP. This one is called ribulose phosphate. This one, compared to the others, has five carbons. One, two, three, four, five. So it's a five carbon chained molecule. And the last molecule is ribulose biphosphate, RUBP. So same thing, this one has five carbons. I would like to point out that 
you can see the word phosphate biphosphate this is because we've got a phosphate group so biphosphate there are two phosphate groups so same thing here there are two phosphate groups here we've only got one and same thing here we've only got one the center atom is a phosphorus atom and it seems to be red but it's actually a pinkish color so two main things we've got molecules which have different numbers of carbons so we've got car molecules with three carbons molecules with five carbons and the second thing is that they have a certain number of phosphate groups and I've just realized I didn't mention it for this one. This one also has one phosphate group. Recap. We've got some knowledge from the experiment of Calvin. We've got the names of the molecules. So now we can detail all the steps of the Calvin cycle. So there's going to be three parts. So we're going to start off with ribulose biphosphate and CO2. So this first step is going to require an enzyme which is called Rubisco. Rubisco is going to add CO2 onto ribulose biphosphate. This would create a molecule with six carbons and this enzyme will automatically split this six carbon chain into two um, three carbon chain molecules which are PGA. So this first step it's called carbon fixation. This is where carbon dioxide enters the cycle where the carbon of the of CO2 enters the cycle. Bear in mind that Calvin identified this because he was using radioactive carbon, carbon-14, so he knew that it first was added to PGA. So what happens? The enzyme adds it to ribulose biphosphate and this ribulose biphosphate is immediately split into these two molecules. So the first one which really ends up with the first radioactive carbon is phosphoglycerate. So this is the first step, carbon fixation. Then the next molecule, um, we go from a molecule with one phosphate to a molecule with two phosphate groups. So this means a phosphate group has to be added and the best way to do that is simply to take it from an ATP molecule. So to go from that molecule to the other one, ADP, ATP sorry, is going to be used. So you know that ATP, when the phosphate is used, you end up with ADP and PI. And this PI is one of the phosphates, is the phosphate which will be added to the molecule. So this second step is the reduction. Um, biphosphoglycerate will be reduced into phosphoglyceraldehyde. You know that to be reduced is going to require some electrons. These electrons will be provided by the oxidation of NADPH2, which will be oxidized into NADP. Oops. So, um, these first steps, they're going to happen more than once, so you're going to add each time one CO2. So when you get to the point where you've added six CO2, and that you've also used six ribulose biphosphate, you're going to end up with 12 phosphoglycerates. These 12 phosphoglycerates are going to require 12 ATP molecules. 
that will create 12 ADP. Um, we'll also have 12 biphosphoglycerate. I forgot to mention this. So to reduce these 12 biphosphoglycerates, we're going to need 12 NADBH2, which will be transformed into 12 NADP. Therefore, we will have 12 phosphoglyceraldehyde. And this is a turning point. When you get to 12 phosphoglyceraldehyde, this is going to, the cycle is going to split into two. Two of these, two PGRs, will be used to make glucose. So this is what you've what you know you've known for some time now that photosynthesis produces glucose. So this is how it's, it's done. So two PGR will be used to make glucose. So this is coherent. Two two free carbon chains molecule is going to create one molecule with six carbons. So we add in two times three carbons, and we have six carbons at the end. And the other part, 10 phosphoglyceraldehydes, they're going to be used to regenerate the CO2 acceptor, which is, in this case, RUBP. So these 10 PGLs, they're going to give 6 ribulose phosphate. So we're just going to check the maths here. In modern maths, you know that 10 times 3 is 30. If you divide 30 by 6, you end up with 5. So if we've got 10 molecules which have 3 carbons, then with these 10 molecules with 3 carbons, you can make 6, carbon, six molecules with 5 carbons. You can see here that we've, we're moving from a molecule which has one phosphate group to a molecule which has two phosphate groups. Therefore, we're going to need to use ATP. And to balance this, we will have to use 6 ATP and 6 ADP plus PI. So here we are. This is the Calvin cycle. So this is quite a um, tough diagram, lots of things. Um, what what you need to know is how it works. So you need to know the names, um, RUBP, PGA, etc. You need to know that there are three stages, carbon fixation, reduction, regeneration. Um, you don't need to remember by heart all the steps with the ATP, the NADPH2. However, if you're given the diagram, you must be able to explain what's happening in this diagram. Okay, so big general recap. If we add what you know from the light dependent stage, so you remember all the work we've done on the Z scheme, you can now add to this what we've just done on the Calvin cycle. So I started off the video saying the dark stage of photosynthesis. That's how it was first cool. But then scientists changed the name into light independent stage. The reason is, if you say dark stage, it gives the feeling that it only happens in dark conditions. However, when a plant is exposed to light, well, the light independent stage occurs but also the light independent stage occurs in light conditions as well. So that's why they've changed it so it used to be called dark stage but now what scientists named them and that's what we've been using in the booklet is light dependent stage and light independent stage. Okay so um, this it's probably a good diagram for you to have really a overall look at how the two stages bind and interact together. Um, I'd like to finish this video on how to revise photosynthesis, um, especially for these two parts, light dependent stage and light independent stage. What I would advise you to do is to start by learning this one by heart. 
this one you really need to know it because you have questions which ask which molecules are used in both cycles so the answers are um, NADPH2, ATP etc. So this diagram you need to know it by heart. I would start off by doing that. Then I would look at this one. This one I would also... So the idea is that once you know the first one, you then know that this part here, there is more detail here. This diagram I would advise you to learn the big steps. Probably learn it by heart. Apart from the Z scheme, you don't need to know this by heart, but just simply know that ATPase creates ATP here with the gradient of protons and that some of the electrons and protons are moved here. And once you're, you know this diagram, you can then add this diagram. You don't need to know this one by heart, but you need to know, be able to explain it. And once you've done this, you can then have a look at this one, same thing, you don't you don't need to know it by heart as such, but you, you must be able to explain it. Um, you've got a back exercise which shows roughly what you need to know um, for this part. So, as I said, step one, learn this one by heart. Step two, have a good knowledge of how this one works. Step three, have a good knowledge of how that one works. And step four, understand how the Calvin cycle, so light ind independent part, works. This is one possibility. Obviously, we all work in different ways, but I, that's perhaps one way to learn it. If you have different ways, you, you can always mention them to me, and I can mention them to the class or pupils in future years. So this is almost the end. We're going to finish with a song. Um, it's quite interesting on the on YouTube. We've got many videos where they've um, made a song about photosynthesis. Um, a lot of them use rap, and I find it quite amusing. Uh, I don't know if this will help you remember it, but I just wanted to show you this one, which I thought was quite quite a good one. So here we go. The Calvin cycle takes place last in the stroma of the chloroplast, the fluid-filled matrix that's contained outside the thylakoid membrane. The cycle begins initially with a sugar called RUBP, a starting compound which contains five carbon atoms in its chain. Okay, I'll let you watch the rest um, at home. So that is that. It will be all for today. So thanks for watching, um, good work revising this, and see you for the next video. Goodbye.